for our special guest, Ryan Johnson of the Community Foundation. And you brought a guest, Ryan. I did bring a guest. It's always okay. nice when you bring guests. We're going to be talking to Taylor from the Youth Center here in a minute. Yeah. So exciting things going on out there. Yes. You know, one of these days, I'm just going to throw in money talks as you, you know, come in here. That way, just you, you'll have your own talk or something. It yeah, I, I could su suggest if you walk up songs for me. <laughs> I'm sure you could. But with the Community yeah. Foundation, Money Talks is always a there good thing. There you money. go. It's a good thing. So, yeah, so we've got a lot of things going on um, right now. We'll talk about Giving Tuesday, but um, one thing folks are always thinking about this time of year is year end giving. Yes. Um, those times to make those gifts um, that may help with tax purposes. That's always a fun time when you sit down and figure out what you have to pay in taxes, a lot of times a charitable gift will help reduce that yeah. burden. So um, in the year giving, um, one thing that we've seen a lot lately is IRA roll, charitable rollovers. Okay. Um, that's been something that's been great where if there's somebody that has a required minimum distribution, mm -hmm. that's the technical term for it, um, and they don't want or need the income, um, they're able to roll that over directly to a qualified charity. Organizations like the Community Foundation um, fit that and that can fulfill that required distribution and also make a gift to something that the donor is passionate about in the community. So oh. um, keep things like that in mind. If you have questions, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we'd love to talk to you about how those, those gifts can be put to use in the community. Yes. So, something else we want to talk about are some recent grants okay. that we've made. Um, a couple of different areas. Um, we have a group called our Ambassadors Club. Oh, okay. This is a group of former board members that get together on a regular basis to look around the community, to look at some of the needs throughout the community, and and make some grants. A few years ago, uh, a group of at that point, they were current board members, but now their former board members helped create um, what we call the Service Committee Legacy Fund, and that's a fund that it's a community fund, um, but that group gets together and looks at needs and then makes grants from that fund. So mm -hmm. it's kind of neat to see how that has come full circle. So some of the grants that they made recently, uh, United Ministries, they have this Christmas basket program going on, a really mm -hmm. neat program to help um, get food out to families um, who could use a little bit extra. Um, so they granted to that. Another neat program, Shop with the Cop, um, um, yes. a program that um, some of our local law enforcement participate in, um, raise money and help provide um, Christmas gifts and needs for families in the community. Yes. Um, Sayo Zai, they do a pretty cool banner contest. They do. I always enjoy seeing those. An art banner contest where students in our area, grade and middle and high schools, create banners and then they get to hang downtown in Rochester. It's always cool to see what the students have come up with. So. Yeah, I keep trying to encourage my kids to do it. They're all very talented. I'm just, you know, yeah. you know they need to just, eh, they're like, I don't want everybody to see my Then they can show off their artwork in, yeah. in downtown Rochester in exactly. some different areas. So it, it's a neat program. Um, another um, area that the group granted to was the Riley Family Fund um, mm -hmm. at the Community Foundation. It's a fund that helps Families who have children that are at Riley Hospital or need um, transportation to and from helps with things like fuel expenses um, for that. And then another one was Recovery Cafe. Mm. Um, Recovery Cafe has been providing a bunch of services in our community. We think of recovery services, um, things like substance abuse, but Recovery Cafe is much bigger than that. It's, it's really any kind of addictions um, and also they've been able to provide some mental health services recently for um, the members at the cafe. Yes. So a really great organization. So those five organizations received some grants um, to look at, um, to, to be able to help provide for those programs. Um, I know it's not Thanksgiving yet. Yeah, we don't enough. decorate at our house mm. until after Thanksgiving for Christmas. <laughs> but, um, Oops. If you drive by the museum on mm -hmm. 31, you know there's a new structure going up there. There it is. Um, 
the Historical Power Association is in process of building Santa a house. Yes. He was living in a barn. He's yeah. going to have his own house now. All right. So um, we we're able to grant um, from our community funds to help build Santa a house. So soon we'll be able to see Santa as we drive past the museum yeah. on 31. You think Santa will be happy to have his own house instead of being stuck in the barn all the time? I think so. Okay. Think so. Of course, this is a historical thing that was on one of the factories north of town for a number of years. The Historical yeah. Power Association has um, saved, and I, I hear Santa got a new suit of clothes, aka a paint yeah. job. So uh, he's going to be looking too. really spiffy this year. So check out Santa out at the Historical Society when he goes up out there. So yes. looking forward to that. Um, another grant that we re just recently gave out was to the Times Theater. Okay. Of course, that's an organization. You don't know how many conversations I've had in the last <laughs> month that say they had an event going on. There were so many people downtown that I had trouble finding a parking spot. Yes. That's a good problem to have. That We've is got a great things going to have. on. And again, Christmas, um, mm -hmm. you think about some of the themes that are going on. If you haven't looked at their Facebook page recently, they've got a neat list of Christmas movies. Yes. Some of the favorites. Yeah. Um, you're going to have, I think, we at the Community Foundation are helping sponsor one of the Grinch movies. Okay. It should be fun. All right. Christmas Story. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorites. My family doesn't agree with me on that, but hey, you know what? Anyway, you, hey. you just got to be careful and remember to drink your Ovaltine. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm working on getting my decoder ring, so <laughs> one of these days I may be able to de decode those secret messages that you put out on there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we got to start some sort of secret club here with that. We do. We do. Um, and what would Christmas be without Christmas vacation? Ah, uh, yes. I watched that's, that last night. There's, there's, <laughs> there's a local family that, that is sponsoring that in memory of a pretty significant person in our community. And so that's, um, those are so, just a few of the things coming up. Yes. I hear that Die Hard's going to be there. I know there's conversation about whether that's a Christmas movie. Or not, but it, it, uh, <laughs> I won't weigh in on that because I don't have an opinion one way or the other. But, uh, okay. um, so it, it'll be neat. But we were able to grant to the Times Theater, of course, a new organization that's um, kind of growing up. Um, they haven't even been in existence for a year, but you think about the impact that they've made in our downtown community. So um, yes. we were able to provide $15,000 to help them with some operating funds. Um, that they're using um, to match donations. So if that's something that somebody is interested in giving to, um, reach out to Julia Theater and um, have her give you the details on that. They're working on a new website, so you can't check them out there, but you can check them on Facebook. And, um, some, some of those details as far as um, an organization that's really going to make a big impact. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to that. Giving Tuesday. Yeah. I hear that's coming up. Uh, yeah, somebody Any told idea what day that's uh, on? Next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. It's on Tuesday. The 28th? So it is the 28th. We're going to be hearing from WRI during that day. Yes. Our guest this morning will be with us that day as well. Double uh, dose. Double dose. Yeah. Twice within the period of a week. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm looking, that. looking forward to having Taylor on the radio. But um, we've got a number of things going on, so we will be celebrating Giving Tuesday. Like you said, November 28th, we'll give you bonus points for knowing the right answer. I try. Um, we will have food 11 to 2, so stop by, have lunch with us. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't make it at that time, we'll have snacks before and after, but we'll be there from 10 to 5.30 that day. Okay. Um, that's kind of our annual celebration of all the things that we've been able to do. I was looking back through some of the grants, and it's neat to look at some of the things that we've been able to affect this yes. year. Um, you think about some basic needs like food pantries, mm -hmm. you think about some recreation areas like parks, we'll talk about the youth center here in a minute and all the great things that they're doing. Um, we might hear a little bit about um, some of the parks in our area. Mm -hmm. We might hear a little bit about the theater on the radio. Mm -hmm. We've got this thing called the Lifetime Philanthropy Award that we've been able to yes. award so we will, that's still under wraps. All right. And we will be announcing that right at the noon hour, so okay. be listening if you are not in person with us um, to WROI. So 
Um, got some great guests lined up for WROI. You guys will be there from 11 to 1 broadcasting. Yeah. And, uh, so looking forward to that. We also have some matches going on. Okay. Uh, like to give a shout out to Rex and Chris and Matt out at Rapid View. Um, they are matching um, gifts to the Outlet Youth Center in the Fulton County Parks. Mm -hmm. um, the outlet, they, we've got $15,000 available to match. The Fulton County Parks, we've got $10,000 to match. And I couldn't say last month, but I can say now. Yes. We do have a match for community <laughs> funds as well. Mm -hmm. um, Lilly Endowment, of course, one of the organizations that is instrumental in the fact that we have a community foundation in Fulton County is right. offering gifts, matches to gifts to community funds, $2 for every dollar given. All right. So you can get a two for one on Yeah. So it'll be an exciting time. So I'd like to invite everybody to come out on November 28th, next Tuesday, have lunch with us. Um, learn a little bit about some of the things that we've done throughout the year. If you're looking for an end-of-year donation, a great time to make that. Participate in one of these matches. and um, it, It's just our time to say thank you to the community for all the things that they've done and helped us do throughout the year. Yes. So it's a good time. So, With that, I'm through my list. Now it's time for the heart of the program. Dun, dun, dun. We're wel welcoming Taylor Shally, who is now the executive director at the Outlet Youth Center. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I think last time we had you on, that may have been an interim title or a yeah. assistant. But mm -hmm. um, So if I'm listening out there, and I, this is the first time I've heard the name, <clears throat> the Outlet Youth Center. Not the Youth Outlet Center. Not the Youth Outlet yeah. Center. Okay. Get that a lot. Okay. <laughs> so the Outlet or the Outlet Youth Center or the Youth Center or that place where kids hang out and have fun. Yep, yeah, we're, we're that too. Okay. <laughs> so maybe tell us a little bit about the history of the organization for somebody that's never heard of it. Yeah. So the idea of the Outlet was actually born from a group of students. Uh, okay. They were presenting some projects to some community members at school, and those community members said, that's a really good idea. Would you guys actually want something like that? We said, yeah, we would. So those community members uh, went out, got some more community members. There were some round tables from that, created a board of directors, and uh, the outlet was established in the fall of 2019. Yeah. Since then, uh, we've been letting kids in our doors, and uh, I came on board in 2021, and we've been there ever since. Neat. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about some of the things that you do at the Youth Center. You, I'm assuming you have programming, you yeah. probably have events, mm -hmm. um, things like that going on. Tell us a little bit about what your organization does. Yeah, so um, the biggest program we offer is our after school program, and that's for students from 6th through 12th grade. Uh, that's 3 to 5.30, four days a week, Monday through Thursday. Uh, they come in and there's a safe, structured space for them to be. It's not uncommon to walk in after school and find a kid asleep, uh, <laughs> okay. which makes me happy because <laughs> if you're, you feel good enough to fall asleep, yeah. then, then we're a safe place. Uh, we feed them a full meal every night. Uh, no one goes home hungry. Um, and then there's, an, there's activities. Monday we have an art club. Tuesday we have a STEM club. Wednesday, Doug Morton comes in and plays chess, and we, uh, the kids who don't play chess will play board games, we'll grab one off the wall. And then Thursdays, we have a grub club, which is cooking club. So the ladies mm -hmm. from Purdue Extension come out, Crystal Grossman and Jessica Riffle, and teach the kids how to cook in a kitchen. Yeah. Uh, so we do that, and I mean, outside of that, we've got a beautiful property, we've got a lawn, the kids go out, they play kickball, they play touch football. Yeah, no tackle football. No tackle okay. football. Right. Although sometimes touch yeah. football can get a little. You got a great yard for football. Last oh. time I was there, I had the chance to play Absolutely. football with a couple of kids. We love mm -hmm. our yard. Yeah. Uh, we we have a lot of fun. Yeah. So and we we also offer help with homework. Okay. For any kid who needs it. So I'm struggling with my homework. Can you help me with my math problem? For sure. Okay. So I uh, I have a volunteer who's really good at math. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> not my forte. Mine neither. Yeah. Uh, so that's our biggest program. But outside yeah. of that, we have a preschool book club that meets Friday okay. mornings at 1030. Uh, we have a great member of our community, Chris Cox. She comes and runs that entire thing. And she's amazing. She's yeah. wonderful. The kids love her. Yeah. We do songs, we read a story, we do a craft, and then we have the snack, which is the, yeah. you know, the snack is I've always been the best I've been to that, and I think day. I missed out on the snack. You did? Well, you didn't stay I, long I, enough. I don't think I stayed long enough for yeah. the snack. Mm -hmm. 
So we're not having it this week because of Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, but we that is sponsored monthly by community businesses and individuals. And uh, that's at 1030 every Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about some of the programming. You also have some space that community organizations use. We do. Talk to us a little bit about that. And so, if somebody says, hey, I need some space for a meeting, how yeah. do I do that as well? Uh, so the building we are in is, is the building that was formerly Chavaltier. And if you've ever been in that building, uh, the front retail space is kind of what we call our community space. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned Matt, Rex, and Chris. Of course, their generosity, they donated that entire property yes. to us, yeah. uh, which I still get goosebumps when I tell that story because yeah. it's a... It was a God moment for sure. Yeah. Uh, but since they donated to us, that's you know kind of how we give back to the rest of the community. Uh, so that space is open for people to rent. It holds about 50 people, uh, host birthday parties. Um, we've had some non-profits come in and meet. A Special Olympics board meets there. We have a Girl Scout troop that meets there. Um, we've had businesses come in and do strategic planning there. It's, it's yeah. kind of a, a multi-purpose room. So we can't give you the back part with all the fun stuff, um, no. but the front part for sure. There's a full kitchen. There's a you know a serving counter, and all we ask for for that is just some sort of donation. Yeah, you mentioned the back part with the fun stuff. Yeah, tell us a little bit. I usually try and break the basketball game. When Listen, I come out Brian's there. pretty good at the basketball game. <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at them all, but. That's yeah. the one I can't crack. Okay. Uh, we've got a pool table. We've got a little arcade game. We've got basketball. Uh, there's an air hockey game. There's a foosball table. Ping pong. There, the other, ping there you pong. go. There's ping pong. Yeah. I'm trying to vision the space and go through them all. <laughs> uh, we've got a TV. We play music on. And yeah. There's a lot of fun stuff. And I think when I've been out there before, I've seen kids doing something 3D or virtual reality or just hanging out and having fun with Just friends. Just hanging out and having fun. That's a big part it's of It's a place it. where you can come and be a kid. So we've talked about this. If somebody didn't know about the youth center, where are you? We are at 491 Apache Drive, out okay. behind uh, the Winning Edge and Beacon Credit Union, Farm Credit. We're kind of tucked back in that little corner, so that's yeah, where you yeah. can find us. Yeah, and it's, it's a neat space. You, you talked about the space being donated and it checked a lot of boxes. Yeah. The former space didn't have outdoor, didn't yeah. have grass. Did not have grass. We kind of talk about our kids like they're cows. <laughs> they have grass. We got to give them grass. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And I know some other outdoor fun things like a basketball hoop down there that yep. the kids get to play. Probably not so much in the wintertime. No, we put them away for the winter. Okay. They're out in the barn. Okay. So one kid came in actually last week and said, someone stole our basketball hoops. <laughs> you know, we just put them away for the winter. Yeah. Can't play on the ice too much. No, on yeah. that. So, and I know some other things that, that were initial concerns have also been um, addressed. You talk about things like transportation. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about how that came about. So we actually, when we were, um, our Main Street location, which is where Mustard Seed Mercantile is now, um, we had had a, a donor in the community say you know if if you want this to be your building let's expand it and you know fix some things and they had donated us um a down payment to buy the building mm -hmm. that same day rapid view calls and said we want to give you schnabel tier we said oh my gosh so we called this donor back and told them you know kind of what had happened they said amazing buy a van with that with that money we were going to give you uh so we have 15 passenger van Awesome. Um, we're working on a wrap, so right now it's just kind of a plain white van. Um, we go pick the kids up from school every day and yeah. drive them over. Yeah, and then uh, you mentioned when you're talking about what the kids want and safe, mm -hmm. a, a safe space. I mean, this is the next step in that to be able to help get kids there and get kids home. Because mm -hmm. uh, we don't really want kids walking through those high traffic areas. And they try to walk, and I say, get in the van, yeah. I'm taking you home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I um, appreciate <laughs> all that have, the donors that have made that possible as oh, well yeah. To, yeah. to help get kids there safely and, and home safely. I'm very grateful. Yeah. Anything else you want to share about the, the youth center? Well, we have a special event coming up. Okay. Uh, Santa's workshop. Oh, man, oh. Brian, I should have been prepared. 
I told you to ask me about we, this. We have Santa theme today. We talked Santa. about Santa's house, Santa's workshop. All right, Santa's workshop is December 2nd. That is a okay. Saturday. Uh, we've got two sessions available at 9 and 10.30. Students 3rd through 12th grade can come and make four free gifts for their family members. Awesome. Uh, so we've got actually a sponsor for this event this year, yeah. Jason and Carrie Cadwell. Uh, so, so they're going to make some really cool gifts this year. Yeah. So once they make them, we wrap them for them. They get to decorate the bag. Um, they're excited. Uh, often they'll go, this one's for my mom, this one's for my dad, this one's for my sister, and this one's for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they'll keep one for themselves, which is okay. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to do that, if you're interested, uh, go ahead and go to our website, theoutletucenter.org, and register. We do need students to register just so I can make sure that um, it's spread out evenly and I have, um, I don't yeah. fill up a session too much more than what we can handle, yeah. so. Me. Yeah. Give, give that website again in case somebody was listening and didn't get it written down. Yeah, theoutletucenter.org. All right. So I didn't, add, I didn't tell you I was gonna ask you this question, but your favorite, <laughs> no. your favorite part of the youth center, do you, mm -hmm. you have a favorite thing? A favorite thing, I mean the kids, yeah. It sounds kind of sounds like a cop out answer, but it's not. Yeah. I love the kids. Yeah. They are so fun. Yeah. All of the time. They they make me smile. They make my day. Um, they make me thankful for what I have, and I'm thankful I have them. And yeah. oftentimes I need them more than they need me. Yeah. So it's it's a very rewarding place to be. And I think I, I pop in occasionally, have a chance to do, be yeah. around, and um, that was gonna be my comment too sometimes kids just want to know that somebody cares about them. absolutely you, you may not mm -hmm. need special math skills which I am lacking yep but mm -hmm. I do have the time sometimes to just hang out with kids and play a game or just have a conversation well, and it's it's one of those things where um, we're caring about the kids in our community mm -hmm. so it's a if, if a kid feels if a kid leaves and I know that they felt love while they were there then I've done yep. my job so it's, that's my goal every day show yep. some love it's a neat neat opportunity to help and yeah. care about kids so I'm listening I want to get involved how do I do that we have a lot of ways to get involved okay. Brian you are in luck uh, we need some physical volunteers come out to our building hang out during after school program um, you know if you if you want to commit to just a semester that's great if you want to do next summer that's great um, go ahead and give me a call and I'll give all that information here in a little bit um, but we need people to come volunteer the second thing um, we've been looking for are people to cook us meals. Okay. Um, we cook them. Kids like to eat. They love to eat. Who yeah. knew, right? Paul, um, you got a middle schooler that likes to eat. Uh, three. Okay. Three. Oh, yeah. 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 I've got more than three. I've got but two at you. my house that like to eat. <laughs> Six, seven, and eight. So there you go. Okay. You know yep. I know how that goes. <laughs> um, but uh, feeding them food is really important. We have a lot of food insecure. Uh, kids in our population that come. So we feed them a full meal every night. Um, we have an amazing volunteer, Gerilyn Hines, who plans those meals. She looks at sales at Kroger's and Sam's Club and Costco, and uh, they, they love her cooking. So she's amazing. We couldn't do it without her. Um, but we've been trying to bring in some more of the community. We, we've had some people come in on Mondays. Uh, the Winning Edge did a day, and Shepherds is going to do a day here coming up. Um, Woodlawn Health will be there soon, and uh, we just want to bring people in. Swiss Lauren Smith did it, that was the other one. And uh, bring in a meal, serve it. I've had some people go, we don't really want to cook, but here's some money to order pizza. Yeah. That's super helpful too. Yeah. Uh, and then just frozen meals, you know, that I can, some days, sometimes days are crazy, yeah. you know, yes. something <laughs> I can pull out of the freezer and defrost and put in the oven and not have to worry about it. So yeah. uh, that's awesome. Also, there's great opportunities to give. Yeah. Um, you can give just generally to our operating funds. You can give to our endowment fund at the yeah. Community Foundation, uh, which is, is looking pretty good. It's only yeah. been open for a year, and I'm yeah. thankful for everyone who's been giving to it. Uh, but there's also really neat opportunity to sponsor a student. Uh, this is a monthly gift. There's three different tiers from $30, $50, and $70. And each of those tiers provides something for one student a month. And that's really a tangible way to uh, to take care of the kids that walk through our doors. Yeah. 
so I've heard about these opportunities. What's my next step? How do I get a hold of you? Hey, the best way, go to our website, theoutletyoucenter.org. There's a little tab there that says, how can I help? Okay. Press that tab, read through it, see what you want to do, and uh, give me a call. Yeah. Our, our phone number is 574-223-5437. And you can find the phone number. I can, at one point, <laughs> we didn't know where the phone was, but we've got the phone now. Yeah. Or you can send me an email at taylor at theoutletyoucenter.org. And that's also on our website. Good. Well, um, on behalf of the community and community foundation, thank you, Taylor, to you, the board of the youth center, all the volunteers, the community that has supported this. Um, it's it's been a conversation that's been going on for a long time, mm -hmm. and it's awesome to see the success that your organization has developed. And we're looking forward to great things in the future as you just continue to make sure that kids in our community know somebody cares about them. Yep, it's important and we're, we're very thankful that we, we get to do it. All right, well, we've been speaking with Taylor Shalley of the Outlet Youth Center. I got that right. You got it right. I've, I've memorized that. I worked on that for a while <laughs> to make sure that I always get it in the right order, but um, a really exciting opportunity to, um, to help kids in our community and, and a great organization. So um, as we wrap up, just a reminder, um, Giving Tuesday, Tuesday, November 28th. You can't make it in person. We'll Another great way to support Another the youth great, center. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So come out, give to the match, youth center, Fulton County Parks, community funds. If you can't decide on which one, it can go to community funds. Um, we'll be there from 10 a.m. to 5.30, lunch from 11 to 2. I'd suggest coming during lunch because it's going to be really good. I've heard. Listen to WROI, hear some interviews, we'll have Taylor on with us again, we'll have somebody from the theater, we'll have somebody from the parks talking about things going on, and we'll be announcing the Lifetime Philanthropy Award, so can't wait. check us out online, nicf.org. If you can't make it in person on Giving Tuesday and want to make a donation, you can donate there. Um, check our Facebook page out, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office, 227 East 9th Street. We'd love to talk to you about what's going on in the community and how you can help. All right, Brian, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you again on Tuesday. Looking forward to it. Have a happy Thanksgiving. You too. You're listening to 92.1.